Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Spoken. I'm your host, Terry Love. To my right here, Derek Williams, and to my left here, Lance Twitwell. Today is June the 4th, I believe, 2012. We got a lot of things to talk about this past weekend. It is Monday. We had a lot of sports this weekend. Both series in Eastern Conference, Eastern Conference Finals, as well as the Western Conference Finals, are now tied 2-2. So it seems as if no one can win on the road right now. Both teams, all four teams have won, two games at home or whatnot. Uh, but what, are, what is your biggest surprise? What is your biggest surprise right now in both uh, the Eastern and Western Conference Finals? Is it what you predicted 2-2 right now? Or I had both series at 2-2 two two right now. If you follow me in the last couple of days on Twitter, I both predicted both these series to be knotted at 2-2, two two, and that's what they are right now. I had I had little confidence in Miami that could go a three one in Boston. Right. I mean, because Miami has showed me nothing on the road in the playoffs, or you know, not really in the regular season when they have moments where they can put you away. They've only really done that one time, and that was in the Indiana series. And Indiana's not an experienced ball club. Boston's been there. They win. They winners. Championship pedigree. The heart of a champion. Doc Rivers. I knew they'd get it done. Oklahoma. Um, I picked them in six, so I, they went down two. I had to have it at two two because I picked them to win. So, and I still got Oklahoma in six, by the way, too. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, shocked, I'm not shocked by the Celtics going up two two. They they were thirty and ten um, at home all season long with the playoffs combined going into the series with Miami. So them come, going winning two straight games is not a shock to me. What is a shock to me though is the way OKC has beaten the Spurs. I know we've all talked about. Obviously, me and Derek been on the same page about how. Uh, we, we, you know, the, 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 the Thunder are very talented and might be more talented than the Spurs, but I thought that the Spurs were a better team as far as their nucleus and how they played and, you know, how their execution was delivered. Um, but the, the, the Thunder have completely exposed the, the, the Spurs. And, the, and what I mean by that is the Spurs, when you make them dribble the ball and create their own shots, they're not the same offense. They're a team that is sound with their passing. But when you make a team, when you make one of their players that's not Tony Parker, and I'm even including Mono Ginobili because I think he's lost a little bit of his step. He isn't as quick off the off the dribbles he once was. When you make this team dribble the ball, like you know, Kawhi Leonard and you know, right. Tim Duncan, I mean, you're not gonna these guys are not gonna score off the dribble. So the Thunder pressured them. Uh, they, they, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, they they did a perfect job of learning how to avoid that pick and roll. Russell Westbrook was getting absorbed in the first two right, games, right. and the third and fourth game. He played out of his mind. And Serge Ibaka coming off of that and supporting uh, Russell Westbrook off that pick, it was incredible. I, I, I haven't seen the Thunder play like that since this team has been together. So I, I, that is what impressed me and shocked me more than anything. They step, put Steph Alosha on Tony Parker, too. That's what right. changed the series. Yeah. Right? He's a better defender. He'll fight over that pick and roll. He'll get up under the pick and roll. He just, as far as just being a, 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 a smarter defender than Westbrook is. So basically what they did was put their best defender, perimeter defender, on Tony Parker, which – is what we say in coaching is cutting the head of the snake off, and that's what they. Yeah, done. I think Cephalosha gets in his Parker's head because of, and I'm not trying to be funny here, but they're both French, and he said Cephalosha said that he's been talking junk to Tony Parker in French, so it throws Tony Parker off a little bit because he's not used to doing that or hearing that in American basketball. So he said that it's been kind of a cool thing for him to do, you know, like he gets to talk trash to somebody who doesn't understand what he's saying. Right. So I think it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool like mental game that he's playing with Tony Parker, and the fact he's just bigger than Tony Parker. He's, he's bigger, more he's stronger, and yeah. he can keep up with Tony. Yeah. He might be. He's. I think he's a top ten as far as guards are concerned. Top ten perimeter defender we have in this league. Very underrated as far as what he can do. You know, you got young uh, rising stars like Amon Shumpert that can play the defender. You know, up there, uh, Tony Allen, guys like that. But Amon Shumpert, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated defenders we have in this league as far as guards are concerned. Who's up? No, uh, uh, Cephalosha. I'm sorry, Cephalosha. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if he's underrated. I mean, anybody you put match up on Kobe and feel real good but about it. But he's just now getting noticed. That's what I'm saying. Like, nobody's right. really been talking about self right. until right now. Everybody talks about Harden, Durant, and Westbrook, you know, and Ibaka, of course. So, last night, the Miami Heat was defeated last night in Boston uh, against the Celtics in overtime or whatnot. Both uh, Paul Pierce fouled out as well as LeBron James. First time, I think, in four years, LeBron James fouled out of the game. Uh, so, that's very interesting. So, uh, what do you think about that? Was that... <laughs> and we know there's some LeBron um, haters may think that he fouled out on purpose because he can handle the pressure or whatnot. But uh, <laughs> I would hate to think that. But you know, uh, at that one point in the game, I don't think uh, you would hate to think that. I, I know the Celtics are winning around 17, 18 points, and yet the, you know the defense uh, of Miami held them to what was it, uh, 27 points? 27 points. Second half. That's amazing. He's after scoring a season, season in the first half. That's crazy. So, um, any tips? 
or advice for the, the, the Miami Heat or the Celtics? I already know who you're pulling for. <laughs> but for both teams, no. Yeah. Let's let's hear who he's pulling for. I want to. I'd like to hear who Derek's pulling for in this series. That's gonna be a real shocker. I'm just pulling for good basketball. <laughs> there we go. There's a cliche I'm just for the day. For good There's a cliche I, for the I'm, day. I'm, I'm, I'm no secret. I'm not the biggest Eastern Conference fan. You know, I think the best basketball is played out west. It's no secret. Look at the last ten years. Who's won the most championships? It's not the Eastern Conference. It's the Western Conference for basketball reasons. Um, Miami. Uh, they've they've got some issues. They've they've got some issues. They've, are, are they fixed? Can they be fixed? <laughs> there, there, there there's some coaching issues, and I don't know if you can change the coach right now at this point in the season. I mean, their X and O game, they're, 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 they execute so poor in late game situations. They're one of the worst executing teams in late game situations that we have in basketball, and it's kind of sad because they're a championship contending team. Right. And it's just you know they don't they just struggle late in ball games. And you would think when you got great finishers like LeBron James and Wade, you'd be able to finish ball games better. But they struggle so terribly down the stretch, man. And a lot of it's coming down to X and O's. Like last night, the design play, I don't know what the scribble scratch that Eric's supposed to draw up, but I don't know if, Le if, uh, if Chalmers was supposed to be running. I mean, LeBron was ISO. He had one guy on him. He drives lane. So all of a sudden, one guy jumps. Now he's got two defenders. He can turn the corner on two defenders. He's LeBron James. He can turn the corner on right, two defenders. Right. I don't know what he's going to do once he turns the corner. That's that's another story <laughs> with LeBron. But if Mario Chalmers bringing his man to him now, that's three guys. I mean, who draw? I don't know if that was drew up. I mean, it, it seemed like he was drawing up to me. I mean, this guy just come on, man. I, I if he flattens out, if he flattens out and gets way away. Give LeBron. I will give, I will give it to Derek. There, there is some execution problems with this uh, this offense, granted. But guys, I think we're forgetting the fact that they're missing a big piece of their offense for the last two series. They haven't had. We should be used to it by Chris now. Chris Bosh. But I, not only that, that, the big thing they're used to it by now. Free throw. That's what. Uh, that's that's what I'm getting to right there. There's two big things One, they're missing with Chris Bosh. Here's the here's the now that free throw thing can go. That you know we can just keep going with that. But the but the biggest key I want to talk about, guys, with Chris Bosh is he's really the only size they really have. He's six foot eleven. Okay. Now, granted, he is a he is a jump shooter more than a post player. I get that. But when you have that size on your starting five, it makes a significant difference, especially when he can pull that defender that's your the big man. Because look at look at the Celtics. Their their biggest man is Kevin Garnett, right. and he does he does not play post defense, post offense like he used to back in his right. in his prime. So you bring him out with Chris Bosh. I'm telling you guys, it'll be you'll see a, a night and day difference with the way that offense is run because you'll be able to do the pick and pop a lot more quickly than you would with Udonis Haslam. So you're going to get a guy that can score at most 10, 11 points to a guy that can score 27 to 30 points. I'm talking about you get you get let, you let this offense be at full strength. The Celtics don't win another game. What is what is happening? But there's no there's no way. Ha, ha, oh, sorry, as far as uh, 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 Chris Bosh, well, Chris, they're saying from what I've heard from Brian Winhorst, the reporter for the Heat, that he will play Game Five. That's what they're saying. So, uh, but as far as free throws are concerned, guys, I and mean, that's a whole other story. They don't. If they'd have made half their free throws. They're you know they they could have easily made last night. They win the game. It doesn't go into overtime. I know everybody blames LeBron's pass. That pass would have never had to happen. That three he made would have never had to happen had they made their free throws. Coach Bolster, you got to get your guys on the line, man. During practice, it's getting ridiculous, man. When your star, your best player, the best player in the league goes through, was three for seven from the line, it's un it's unacceptable. Right. These are the biggest free throws you're gonna be shooting all season long. Maybe in your career, right. because this this is going to lead you to a possible championship. It's a break to break time, man. You got to make those. Simple think, as that. I think the best player in the league is not playing. I mean, the best player in the league <laughs> would make would make free throws. I mean, can, when you maybe skip maybe skip is right. Maybe these guys are scared to drive the lane and get fouled, so they won't have to shoot free throws late in games because they don't trust itself. Itself for too many jumps. I can't. I can I, I I don't understand how can you be driving and driving and driving for three quarters. And then when the fourth quarter comes, you all of a sudden you can't get to the lane anymore. I don't know. I, I stopped. I, I forgot what you said after you said the best player isn't playing mm -hmm. anymore. So I, I, I apologize. Well, I mean, well, the best player capitalizes down the stretch. He's not going to be. You don't have to worry about this let guy me, missing let, free throws. Let me guess. That 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 best player is probably complete, from LA, right? The, yeah, the most right, complete yeah. player. We're talking about Gasol, right? No, we're not talking oh, okay, about Gasol. Okay, my fault. He make his free throws too. <laughs> <laughs> he make his free throws too. I, I would take Powell over the, on the line than LeBron down the stretch. I, I'm going to take that with. You were two, two for two on that and one. That's right? sad. I might take uh, Tiago Splitter over. I've never done it. It's line. sad when you take a seven. Where's Ben Wallace when you need him? Where's Ben over Wallace? Guard, forward. Wow. You've got issues. Right. You're not going to win a championship like that. No way. So who wins tonight? OKC is Spurs back in uh, San Antonio. OKC. 
Okay, see that yeah. now it was OKC wins tonight. Boom, we win in six, correct? It's, it's, it, I, I picked it to still, six. Still six. It's going to be six. I think they win tonight, and I think they go back to home and wrap it up. I'd love to agree with you, but I think the Spurs win tonight at home. I think they're going to get. The, they're not going to lose three straight games. It's it's. They're going to win tonight, and it's going to go seven like I predicted. So well, simple, seven. simple as that. It's the Spurs are going to find a way to beat the, the Thunder. Granted, the, the Thunder played very well. All congratulations to them, but I'm still stick with my initial prediction. They're still not at that place yet of winning a championship. I, I, I think they had some good home games. That crowd ignited them, but they're going back to San Antonio. They haven't won San Antonio in a few years, a couple years. So, so you're saying the Heat tomorrow against the Celtics? Mm -hmm. What about you tomorrow? Heat Celtics tomorrow. Paul Pierce with a big game, 35 points. Celtics. I'm still waiting for Paul Pierce to dominate. He hasn't had a big game yet. He's scared. <laughs> well, if he can they're, not foul out, maybe he can do that. But three of his last five games, he's fouled out. I just and they're two and two. I feel. Good. <laughs> well, they have They just had a big long yeah. home stretch. So because when LeBron out. fouls out, there's really Wade and a bunch of just role players. When All the more reason why LeBron's the best player in the league. Just saying. Nah, he's not the best. Oh, okay, right. Well, now he's not. Well, now he's well, not. And on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on The Spoken. Terry Love, Lance Twitt, what's in my love? Can he make free throws? <laughs> Terry Wilson, my right. <laughs> he's best player. If he's Stop. best player. If he's best player. You're not going to like what's going to happen after Rob Barrett. If he's you're best, best player like in the league, it. the series will be over like with. <laughs> Just let you know, Derek. Best player in the league, you're the best sweep. Because he made his free throws. The Celtics didn't want any games. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.